5, verses 8 through 11. Reading from the English Standard Version. 1 Peter chapter 5, just stand for the reading of the word of the Lord. Amen. When you get it, just say, I got it. You'll need some help. Let's use that table of contents. It'll direct us to where we need to be. 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 8 through 11. And it says, be sober-minded. Be watchful. Your adversary, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking someone to devour. Resist him. Firm in your faith, knowing that the same kinds of sufferings are being experienced by your brotherhood throughout the world. Verse 10, and after you have suffered a little while, the God of all grace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself, God's going to do it himself, Restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. Then he ends it with a praise. To him be the dominion forever and ever. Amen. Just want to talk with you just a few minutes from the topic. Don't panic. God is still in control. Now, I don't know if there's anybody that needs that about now, but just, just tell anybody that will listen to you. Don't panic. God is still in control. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, thank you for this opportunity to proclaim your word to your people. May we be encouraged through your word. My brothers and sisters, we live in a very volatile world. The conditions of the world can change instantly and throw the global community into a tailspin. Listen to this. There are 591 Zika cases in the United States, travel-related, according to the Center for Disease Control. We got a reason to be concerned. There are over 30 active wars and conflicts in the world right now, coupled with the threat of terrorism by ISIS and Al-Qaeda. That's something to be concerned about. Yes, yes, sir. Nationally, our country is more divided than ever with the flamboyant rhetoric of divisive politicians. So much so that many of our fellow Americans have been left out and counted out because of the political games that are played in Washington. According to the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development, there are over 47,725 veterans homeless on any given night in the United States of America. Not to mention the deluge of other social concerns and grave injustices that have become a common staple in our communities. Church, we're in trouble. The truth of the matter is, whether you are a Christian or not, Sometimes the complications of life can cause us to want to panic and just give up and throw in the towel. Anybody ever felt like that? I know I felt like that, and there might be some people right now in this sanctuary who feel that way, tired of robbing Peter to pay Paul, tired of seeing the wicked prosper and seemingly the righteous struggle. Tired of being passed over for the promotion for someone who has less time, less education, and less experience. I can't get no help up in here. Tired of fighting in relationships with our children or whomever. Just tired, busted, and disgusted. Somebody say, just tired. And being tired was the sentiment of these Gentile Christians for whom the Apostle Peter was writing to. This was to a people who entered into Christianity under some very turmoil situations. 
They were located in Asia Minor, what we would call today modern day Turkey. The Apostle Peter taught these new Gentile Christians about living righteously, the call to good works, family order and discipline, and the reality of a believer suffering. As a result of their newfound religion, they experienced a shift. Somebody say a shift. See, they shifted from the world to the kingdom of God when they became a believer. Are there any people in here that shifted you, you, from out of the world but into the kingdom of God? They shifted in some of their relationships. You know, that happens when you give your life to Jesus. Some of their family members shifted on them. Their social practices shifted on them. And I'm pretty sure there were probably some of their old acquaintances that say, oh, you think you all that now. Now that you up in that church and y'all singing and all of that, I remember you when. I, I know what you used to do. And I want you to begin to put your hands together for every hater. Because if somebody can identify what you used to be, they are acknowledging that there's now a change in you right now. Come on, you ought to thank God for every hater right now. And with all of this pressure, opposition, attacks and stuff and issues, the text screams a message, don't panic. God is still in control. Your world might be in chaos, but God is still in charge. The world may be going against each other, rumors of wars and all kinds of disaster, but God is still articulating. He's still moving things around. I'm just glad God is still in control. It is in verse 10 of 1 Peter chapter 5 that we find directors on how to keep our cool during challenging and difficult times. Scripture says, and after you have suffered a little while, yeah, the God of all grace who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ will himself. He ain't sending no angels to do this. God's going to do this thing himself to restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. In this text, we find three statements. Endure the situation. Somebody say endure. endure. We also find discern the brevity of the situation. That means it doesn't last as long as you think it does. Somebody say discern. And then the last thing is trust God to act. Somebody say trust. So if you need to remember something, just remember endure, discern, and trust. Verse 10, the initial statement, and after you have suffered. Stop right there. There's no need to go any further. We got to stop right there. This is an indication that the apostle Peter expected the believers to endure their sufferings. Now this is going to get me in trouble. But the life of a believer will not always be on easy street. Sometimes you got to go through some stuff. I wish I had some people in here who've been through some stuff. Some of the stuff we've been through, we can't tell nobody else. Uh, but we've been through some times of suffering and difficulty and challenging. We can't buy into the fallacy that when we get saved, we don't go through no more stuff. I'm exempt from suffering. Not so. That's not what the scripture tells us. By example, Quite to the contrary, Jesus stated in Matthew 10 and 22, and you will be hated by all for my name's sake. But the one who endures to the end will be saved. Somebody say endure. Second Timothy 2, 3, and 5 says, you therefore must endure hardship. My God, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ, are there any soldiers in here? Some right says, I'm a soldier in the army of the Lord. Are there any soldiers in here? Yeah. When you're in the military, you got you sign up to fight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Endure. 
First Peter 4, 12 through 13 stated, Beloved, do not be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes upon you to test you. Let's stop right there. I can't believe any believers who, are, oh, I'm surprised. I'm surprised the devil is coming after me. I'm surprised my family is being attacked. I'm surprised my body is being, you can't say you're surprised because the text, the Bible already tells us. Don't be surprised at the fiery trial when it comes to test you as though something strange was happening to you. Listen, this is supposed to happen. If the enemy never attacks you, you're doing something wrong. Just, just budge your name and say, don't, is he attacking you? We don't want to be on the same side. Verse 13, but rejoice in so far as you share Christ's sufferings, that you may also rejoice and be glad when his glory is revealed. Look at Job. Everybody know about Job. He's righteous. He's God's chosen man. God has confidence in his ability to endure. Yeah. Job confirms this in a little spat he had with his wife. Job 2, 9 through 10. Then Job sat on the ash heap to show his sorrow. Uh -huh. And while he was scraping his sores, because you know he had sores all over his body, he took a broken piece of pottery and scraped his sores. And his wife said, this is the one who said I do with him. Why do you still trust God? Why don't you curse him and die? Get it on over with. Oh, I like Job. Job, Job said, don't talk like a fool. My goodness. If we accept blessings from God, we must also accept trouble as well. I knew I wasn't going to get no hallelujahs on that one. Uh, we want the blessings. We want the testimony, but we don't want the test. Uh, in order for you to have a testimony, you got to go through some tests. Bible said Job didn't say anything against God. See, don't panic. Endure the opposition. Yeah, you can't get past this part. Endure the chemotherapy. Oh, yes. Endure the lonely nights. Endure the opposition on your job. Don't cut tail and run. But stand your ground and endure. Lord, help me. I'm preaching harder than you responded. Endure the financial drought when your pocket nothing coming out but lint. <laughs> oh, my God. Endure when people brag your name in the dirt. And smile in your face and say, how you doing? <laughs> My God, he wants us to endure. The second directive that this text gives us is discern the brevity of the situation. First Peter 5 and 8 says, and after you have suffered, here's the cold word, a little while. Come on, somebody say a little while. What does a little while mean? It means a little while. <laughs> now I understand the song that they sang when I was a little boy. I'm so glad that trouble don't last always. It's, it, it's for a little while. This indicates that situations have a time limit. <laughs> the tendency is to think that our current situations and circumstances will last forever. But my brothers and sisters, we have to discern the brevity of the situation. We must recognize that God knows just how much you can handle. Oh yeah, tell somebody, he knows how much you can handle. One of my favorite scriptures in the Bible is 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There is no temptation but that which is common to God. God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tempted beyond that which you can bear. But with every temptation, he'll provide you a way of escape that you might be able to bear. Uh, you got to hear that part where it says, he will not let you be tempted 
beyond your ability. Fact of the matter, God knows what your capacity is. He knows what your capacity is. Uh, he, the best way I can illustrate it is, uh, let, me, let me get this water right here. You see this top on here? Pastor, can you take that top off? Thank you. S some of us, let me take the top. S some of us have different capacities. Yes. We're not all the same capacity. S some believers have a top full capacity. God knows that you can't handle any more than what can fit in the top. And when you get to your capacity, that's when God does his thing. Now, are there any top full people in here? See, those are the people that tear the church up shouting and dancing because they get out so quick. Then the people that tear out the whole row, you can't hold them down because they'll get in it, but God knows they can't handle much, so they get out of it quick, and they're quick to give God some bread. Y'all playing with me. You're playing with me. And then there are believers.